sportsman coverage of high school football. Tonight, a matchup between the Beacons of Concordia Academy and the Mustangs from Breck. From Breck School in Golden Valley, John Jacobson and Ryan Iverson on a snowy, cold Friday night here. And Ryan, this should be a good matchup. Concordia Academy unbeaten on the season, 6-0. Brett comes in at five and one. Yeah, very competitive, very both very good records, and they both play very similarly too. They like to dominate the line of scrimmage, John. They both run the football very successfully. They both play excellent defense. They stop the run. Both teams have that kind of the same goal. They want to make the other one be a passing team tonight, and you can tell by the conditions. We're getting pelted with snow and wind. This is going to be a tough one to throw the football in. So whoever controls that line of scrimmage is going to have the edge. The Beacon, both teams like to run the football. The Beacons probably a little more so, and I think they're going to force Breck to try to throw the ball to the win tonight. That was St. Agnes plan to success last week, and they were able to slow down Breck's rushing game, and you would think Concordia would employ a, a similar strategy. And you put eight, nine, even ten guys in the box there and force Breck to have to either try to get to the outside or have to throw it down the field. And when you get it, when you play high school football in Minnesota this time of year, you don't know what kind of elements you're going to get, but when it's wet, number two, it's, it's slippery out there, so your speed it gets taken away. You can't plan as well, and you got to take care of the football. So turnovers, taking care of the football, and then make, taking advantage of the few passing opportunities that Breck's going to have, they got to be able to do it. Let's look at our key players, starting with the Beacons. Cal Johnson, their leading rusher, also a starter on defense, something we'll see tonight, you know, with the, the smaller schools. A lot of guys going both ways, and Cal Johnson's one of them. And doesn't he have a perfect football name, too, for a great running back? Cal Johnson, you love the name, but uh, he's a tough runner. He runs, you know, a lot of it up the middle. He's physical, plays defensive end, too. You love seeing number 80 as the running back. He just loved it. Love to see that, but he's a great player, a great two-way player, and they're going to need him to have a big game tonight, especially with the weather the way it is. And for Breck, Derek Turner's really had a great uh, a great season rushing the, the football, almost 1,000 yards already in six games. Isn't that unbelievable? Almost 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns. He's not very big. He's little, but he's fast, and if he can get to the outside and use that speed, and here's the advantage in weather, John. Offensive players, they know where they're going. Defensive players don't. So having that little bit of advantage can help you cut, help you plant, and maybe give him the edge. He's got to have a big game. He's got to bounce back. He's got to be in the 100 to 150 yards tonight for Breck to have a chance to win this game. Really the first cold night of the year for as far as game conditions. And the teams kind of knew that going in, that this was the weather. But still, it's got to be a little bit of an adjustment the first time you come out in temperature in the 30s, wind and some snow mix. It is, and it? it's it's really fun because it's different. You're not used to it. So you get out here, you can see the kids when they were warming up, they're hooting and hollering, and it's just different. But then once you get in the flow of the game, it's just football, just like any other game with any other elements, whether you're playing indoors or outdoors, you got to block better, you got to tackle better, you got to take care of the football. And whoever does those three things is going to win this game, regardless of what the elements are. Should be a good one. It's Concordia Academy and Breck High School football coming up next live here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. 
One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Look at the skies tonight over Golden Valley. The Breck Mustangs get ready to take the field against Concordia Academy. John Jacobson, Ryan Iverson, the Mustangs and the Beacons tonight. Cloudy skies, temperature in the 30s, snow squalls during warm-ups. Right now, no precipitation, but the, the threat of more throughout the evening. <laughs> well, we saw warming up. We walked into the stadium there. It was blowing and hailing, and it uh, was not pretty, but it looks like it's calmed down a little bit. Not much rain. The wind looks like it's died down a little bit. We're ready for some good football. Bracco received the opening kick tonight from the Beacons. Yeah, I think the key here early on is to watch the footing, John, how, how the field is playing. Because sometimes you get this little dusting of, of snow. It, it just makes it slippery. And you'll see guys falling, sliding, and you can't plant as well. And that can negate some speed. So keep an eye on the footing here as we get started. Ethan Winterfeld to kick off for 6-0 Concordia Academy and gets the foot behind the ball. And we are underway tonight in Golden Valley on a bounce handle at the 12-yard line. Return up the middle and a good one all the way out to the 28-yard line, which is where the Mustangs will start tonight's game. Good opening return of uh, 17 yards. And they return by Carter Tyson, sophomore. As you look at Alex McKenna, the starting quarterback tonight for Brack. They're actually on their third quarterback of the year. Sophomore Charlie Ricks was uh, the uh, peg starter coming out of training camp. Sophomore got hurt early in the year. Waziri Laal, the ball was his backup. He got hurt in a JV game. And so we'll see Alex McKenna tonight. Xander Williams as well will get some time at quarterback and you know, we talked in the pregame as you see the first pitch going out to Derek Turner trying to get around the corner gets to the 30 yard line and all the way out to the 34 and you, you, in any program you get down to your, your third string quarterback even if they're good athletes that wasn't the position they were planning on playing to start the season uh, and you don't have as much depth here at Brecker uh, at Concordia. No, and, and Alex McKenna is a running back, so you're taking him out of that spot and you're putting him in. It just throws the whole timing off. It can completely change your offense, and they're going to get, I, I believe, a hold on the first play here from scrimmage. That's going to back him up 10 yards, and that's that's how they were able to get get him uh, outside, Derek Turner outside. But it was a hold there by Will Ott. And that's the key. If you're playing Derek Turner, you cannot let him get to the outside because that's where he is so dangerous. And I don't care what conference or what league, when you average 7.6 yards per rush, that is pretty impressive, not only for him, but also that offensive line gives you an idea. They're moving people around. So first and 20, back from the 18. Ball is dropped by McKenna as he was attempting to pass, picks it up. And gets back to the line of scrimmage. Fortunate that wasn't turned over. He was able to get the football back. He maybe even got a yard gain. It'll be second down and 19. Well, heads up play as you take a look at the Breck offensive starters there. Heads up play. Obviously not what you wanted to, uh, in your first pass attempt uh, of the game. But he did a great job of realizing it was on the ground. Took it. Avoided disaster. And even got a couple yards You know, after that. But yeah, that, you see the conditions already playing a role. And if you are going to throw, you probably want to start with quick, easy throws. Get your quarterback in some kind of rhythm, too. On second down, they'll go up the middle and the handoff and out to the 25-yard line on the run by Turner. And he'll get to about six yards and bring up third down and long, though. Still 14 to go for the Mustangs. And you can see Turner again, not great size, but he's slippery. And he runs right between the tackle and the guard there on the left side. And he just finds a way to keep getting yards. Even after contact, he drives his legs, gets a couple extra yards. Receivers to either side on third down and long. Turner next to McKenna and movement on the line. 
Looks like, well, they're each side pointing fingers, as often happens. It's going to go against Breck. Ooh, I don't know about that. You might have seen, you can see number 59 for Concordia. That's Evan Larson. He felt like he had gone first. And we have, of course, the, uh, the advantage of seeing replay, John. And it might have looked like defense jumped there. The third down now. And 19 to go. Brack on their 20 yard line. Cannon now back up under center. Quick drop. Throw to his left. And the ball is incomplete. Intended receiver is Tyson. And so three and out with a couple of penalties mixed in as well. A tough start for Breck. Well, and a couple of things there. And one thing to think about, too, and you can tell on the throw there. When you throw in high school when the ball's wet, your hands, generally these kids' hands aren't big enough to grip that thing. And so when you have to throw it, you lose some of that velocity. You see that ball took a while to get there. And it's not easy when you're waiting for that ball to come and you know everyone's running at you about to tackle you. I think that just took your eye off the ball just for a second there. Tyson is the puncher, low snap, able to get it off. Concordia let it go, and it'll roll out of bounds at the 39s. The Beacon's e excellent field position. They'll have a first down and 10 at the break, 39, and their first possession of the ball game. Look okay. at Brock Gratz come out at QB. When you see that 18 completions, but they, for 262 yards, so pretty good completion as far as when they do connect. They're usually for some good yards. Only two touchdowns, but I love that. Zero interceptions. They don't need him to have a big game for them to be successful. They just need him to manage the game. They have great linemen, great running backs, and then when he gets his opportunities, he just has to capitalize. On first and 10, and the first run of the game goes to Jake Cotto, the senior running back, only gets maybe a yard to the 38-yard line. Up here it's second down and long for Concordia. We'll look at the uh, Beacons starting offense for tonight. A good group of players that have really played well together this season. A mix of seniors and underclassmen, and they mentioned 6-0 and on the season coming in. Well, they got a good mix of athletes and size up front. On the 38, they go to Cotto again, who gets wrapped up almost immediately. Does get a couple of yards to the 36-yard line. First one to make contact was Griffin Olness, junior defensive lineman for Breck. Well, he did a nice job of collapsing down the line of scrimmage that time. Those are, are quick handoffs, and when they're away from you, a lot of times you'll be unblocked because they assume, the offense does, that you won't be able to get down the line and make that play. He did a great job realizing where the ball was and then pursuing right down the line. Third and a long six for the Beacons. Otto again off tackle, and he spins forward. The ball comes out. They're going to say he was down. And it'll be fourth down here for Concordia Academy. They'll mark the ball at the 32-yard line, bringing up fourth down and about two yards to go. Look at the Breck starters on defense as they look for a stand here on the first possession. Facing a third down and two for Concordia Academy. Just outside the Breck 30. And moving on the defensive line. And now the keeper, Gratz, looks like he got the first down anyway. It's an offside on Breck. And it's a Beacons first down. Well, smart job by the Beacons and specifically Gratz there. Watch him go with the hard count. You can see that you got to have discipline when it's fourth and short like that. You don't want to give a team, especially a great running team, when you've played three good plays to start that drive, give them a free first down. They take the penalty. It gives them a little more yardage, and it's first down and 10 now for Concordia at the Breck 27.
Rats up under center. The handoff and Kata wrapped up in the backfield and dropped for a loss. John Blake, senior linebacker and one of the captains for this Breck team on the tackle for loss. Yeah, not very big, 5'10", 175 pounds. Watch him explode into the backfield right there. He sheds a great job shedding the blocker and then still keeping his hands available to make that tackle. Those are the kind of plays. I think Breck's got to win first down. You want to try to make it third and long for, for the Beacons because they're so accustomed to getting five, six, seven yards of carry on first and second down. On second down, Bratz will hand off. This is Johnson's first carry tonight. Only gets a couple. That our defense has been pretty solid in the inside so far, limiting Concordia to short gains. They'll can continue to attack on the ground, but this one only picks up two, and it's third down and nine. Well, you don't see this a lot either, John, but all 11 guys on offense and 11 guys on defense are all within 15 yards of, of each other. They're not spread out. You don't see wide receivers spread out wide. Look at the number of players that are in the box there. Look at all the Breck defenders. Oh, here we have a wide receiver coming up wide right. Jaden Quats, the receiver, bottoming your screen there on third down and nine. Man in motion, the handoff goes to him. Oh, nice. That is Bryce Paul with a good run on third down, and he picks up a first down down to the 16-yard line. Gain of 10. Well, a little bit different formation. We got the pre-snap motion, and he got some great blocks ahead of him. It's hard to see who that is. I think that's Aiden Kingsbury, number 75, out in front. Great drive blocking right there, following your lineman. Good hard run. And again, you saw third and 10, third and nine. They still have confidence in their running game to, to pick up a first down. Second first down to this drive, first down and 10 at the 16. Breaking one tackle, but that's it. And again, good defense by Breck at that time, they're trying on the right side. Jack McKenna came up and stuck him right at the line of scrimmage. Just hasn't been much, other than that third down run we just saw, there just hasn't been very many holes in the offense. And you can see, watch, right there, does a nice job avoiding the tackle, but bam, look at that tackle. And actually, that was Alex McKenna, number five, who met him right at the line of scrimmage. Man, a penalty on Concordia on that play, actually, for holding, will back them up 10. That's their first penalty tonight. Then will set up first and 20 for the Beacons back at their 26 of Breck. And off, Quast will give it to Johnson up the middle, only a couple of yards to the 25. I'll tell you, I, I like what the Beacons do, John. They, they're running the same plays, right? But they're, they're disguising it up with pre-snap motion, trying to get the defense to focus away. But they're trying to dominate the interior there and own that line of scrimmage, which they've done very successfully all year. So far, Breck's done a nice job of not going for those pre-snap motions and stopping Cal Johnson in between the tackles. And now a timeout taken by the Beacons. Inside of five minutes to go here in the first quarter. There's a look at Bob Wolf, the fear head coach at Concordia Academy. We can't see it in that picture there. You can kind of see it. He is wearing shorts. Right. You love it. <laughs> I asked him about that. He said, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Grew up in Michigan, yeah. coach, started his coaching career there and uh, really likes this group of players that he's got yeah. right now and a, a, a good team, great record, 6-0. Oh, and um, well, there, there's he's done a nice job yeah, with the program. And there's something mental, too, and it is called. You take a look at uh, the Breck head coach, John Martin, also done a really nice job here. 
with the Mustangs, but there's something mental when it's cold like that and you see your coach wearing shorts and say, hey, don't even worry about it. This is nothing to think about. Let's just play football. Snow is coming down here on second down and long for the Beacons. Lots of throw and knocked down by McKenna. Oh, late flag coming in there. That was almost a great Odell Beckham interception by Alex McKenna. He did a nice job of reading pass. Well, pass oh. interference on the wow. Mustangs here, though. Wow. I don't know if it was on McKenna or there's somebody out right there, perhaps behind. Uh, yeah, that's where that, the flag came in. But watch, John, this ball is, I mean, it's is six, eight yards behind the receiver. That's a not catchable ball. And you can hear some of the sidelines from the from the Mustang side saying, how can you call that? There's a good look at, at what they're dealing with with the elements down there. But that ball, I don't think, was catchable. Yeah, I, I, yeah. And it was a late flag, too. Not an automatic first nope. down in high school football, though. So it's second down and eight. Hand off. Trying to sweep right side and getting strung out and down to the nine-yard line, though. Be a little bit short of the first down. Hollis Erskine, his first carry tonight. Well, we, we've seen that motion. That's the first time they handed it off. And really nice job, too, by the Mustangs. Just stringing that out. Nowhere to go. Alex McKenna, we've called his name a number of times tonight already on defense. Does a nice job of pursuing right down the line. Oh, and I think yeah, they got a hold on that play, too. So that is coming oh. back, the run. You know what, I like that the pass interference in high school is not an automatic first down. Yeah. You know, in the NFL, you'll see where it would be third and 27, and it's a two-yard penalty, automatic first down. I, I actually really like that rule in high school football. So now we're back to second and close to 20. Big rush and incomplete. Boy, they were in on Brock Gratz in a hurry. And on the opposite end, it almost got picked off. Yeah. Gratz didn't have anywhere to go. It's a nice play design, but you can see right there, he's got no chance as he gets a, takes a nice hit. Olness and Vincent yeah. Tanaka in on the rush of Brock Gratz, and it's third and very long for the Beacons. Well, when you run that play, you're hoping that that play action, defensive end's gonna run that way. He did a nice job, Olness did, staying wide and putting pressure on Gratz. Gratz just had to get rid of it, and lucky it wasn't a turnover. Third down and 19 to go for the Beacons. And the Breck 25, Gratz looking that way, throwing deep, oh, almost oh, caught. Oh. Well, I thought for sure that initially it was definitely going to be overthrown. I did too. And almost caught by Quast as he nearly ran under that. Oh. Nearly a procedure oh. penalty gear against Concordia Academy. I'm with you, John. We're, we're, we're sitting on the booth. That looked like that ball was thrown away 20, 25 yards overhead. He That was a beautiful ball by Grads and Quast showing some great speed. Look at right there. That looks like it is not even in the vicinity. Quast with a great effort trying to dive and get that. Wouldn't have mattered anyways, but that was almost a beautiful throw and catch. Wow. That's where when you're third and 19, you cannot allow it, an offensive player to get behind you. Keep everything in front of you. Penalty sets them back to third and nearly 25 now from the 29. They'll go back to the ground game. It's Cotto. And only able to get a couple of yards to the 27. It'll be fourth and very long for the Beacons. Last one off the pile for Breck is Tanaka. Yeah, he did a nice job getting off his initial block, going right down the line and pursuing it. He'll give up three, four, five yards when it's when it's third and 24. So a nice job by this Mustang defense. They had a third and 10. They gave up that first down on that nice run. And after that, with the assist of some penalties, have done a nice job here. Not including the penalties. This is the 10th play of the drive, and they've advanced 13 yards. <laughs> It is fourth down for Concordia Academy. On the end of the round, they give 
As Bryce oh, Paul nice. had a nice yeah. run earlier, but he had too yeah. much yardage to go, and Breck eventually able to corral him, and they take over on downs inside their 20 at the 18. Well, Greer Wheaton, he's a defensive back, number 19. He did a great job. I thought he was too far up, and he forced the cutback, but not only did he force it, then he tracked him down and made the nice tackle. Nice play design, too, but... Breck does what they have to do. They stop the drive. They get the ball back. And which offense is going to get in that rhythm first? That's kind of what you're watching when you when you have the elements like this. Who's going to get into that rhythm and move the ball? Second series, McKenna will pitch. Turner trying to pop it outside. They string him out. Still able to get wow. upfield, though, and gets out to the 24. A play that looked like he was not going to get anything and actually stepped across. Yep. The 25 yard line and gets about six yards on a play. Looks like it was going to get nothing. Well, watch this. Two things he does. Watch this little cut right there to get outside. And then Cotto's going to come up and have free reign at him. And the little stiff arm does a nice job of avoiding being tackled there and really not much there, but got six, five, six yards out of it. And those are the little plays that, that average running backs, that's a loss of two. Loss of three. He turns it into a five or six yard gain. Second down and four from the 25. It's Turner and up the middle. He's got a first down out across the 30 to the 33. We can see how quick and explosive he is and they add the fake pitch there. And that's just enough to kind of throw linebackers off a little bit. He just needs a little opening, able to blow through there. And Evan Russ, number 88, does a nice job from defensive end coming in to make the tackle. But nice job by the Mustangs. You can see why this, this young man almost has a thousand yards, John. I'll give it to him again. Oh, ball is blue. out. I think he got back on it, though. Definitely fumbled, but recovered by Turner. Oh, and that's something you've got to keep an eye on. That ball is slippery and it's wet. Good. Let's see if it was a good hand. No, he never had it. Never had it securely, but he look at that concentration, being able to get back on it. Turner does a nice job. I couldn't tell who it was for the Beacons either, but someone had driven their man back into the backfield. Oh, he's way off, he's way off, he's way off. Maybe off, he's off. He's Kenna back to the shotgun, three receivers to the right. Kenna looking that way, fires the oh, ball, wow. gets the completion. First down and more and into Concordia Academy territory. Oh. Down to the 45-yard line on the catch by Will Ott, senior wide receiver. Well, I'll tell you what, McKenna looked like Brett Favre on that throw. He got back, and that was a bullet. We saw him have a couple of a poor attempts on his first drive there. He plants his feet, and watch this throw. That's a rifle, and that's right between the defense. Great route by Ott, and a great throw. That'll give your team confidence when you can throw a strike like that in this weather. Gain of 22 now from the Beacons, 45. Tyson the man in motion. Pitch will go back. This is Turner, 40-yard line. Still on his feet, driving. Got a first wow. down and finally pushed out of bounds. Inside the 35, a gain of 12. I think that last pass and catch there gave them some some spunk. I want you to watch Carter Tyson, number 10. He's a wide receiver in your screen right there. Great blocking down the field. And when Derek Turner turns that north and south, John, he's explosive. Jack McKenna getting a little yeah. push at the end, too, helping out his running back, yeah. which Jack right now, number one. And finally, took three beacons yeah. to get him down. Oh, he's off again. He's off again. He's off so back to back first oh, downs. Whistle on the flag. Like Breck jumped initially. And that's going to set them back five yards. Well, that could derail a drive, John. He got great rhythm going, a nice completion, a big run. You don't want to go backwards, especially in this kind of a weather. So first and 15. We wind down to a minute 20. Three to play here in the opening quarter. A snowy early October Friday. 
Man in motion. McKenna will give it to Turner up the middle. Hit and driven down after a very short gain. Tackled by Bryce Paul. She's your running back and linebacker. And we have another flag down. A face mask. Five yard. Five yard face mask penalty. Concordia Academy. Does it mean or does it seem like we've had a flag on every other play? Well, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, nine penalties here in the wow. first quarter. As you look at the starters tonight for Concordia Academy. So after the penalty, it's second down and eight now for Breck. Kenna has time to throw. Going down the sideline oh. for Tyson off his hand and incomplete. Pretty well defended by Nate Griffin. Well, and that's something to keep in mind. The Beacons have nine interceptions on the year. So they are ball hawks. They will go and grab that. I'll tell you what, not a bad throw. He's thrown into the wind, too, there. And he put it in a spot which it would have been it would have to have been an amazing catch by Tyson, but it couldn't have been intercepted. So really not a not a bad throw, not a bad idea going for it. Like you said, John, well defended. And I'll tell you, keep both of these guys, both of these teams' defense. They get after the quarterback, they, and they intercept the ball. Nine interceptions for the Beacons, six for the Mustangs. On third down and eight for Breck. Fake the toss, and then the draw play to Turner. Oh, Turner gets into the open space inside the 20, <laughs> lower the shoulder, and he's down to wow. the 12. <laughs> Gain of 20 for Derek Turner in a first down. He's 5'9", 175 pounds. He runs like he's 275 pounds. And we saw that play a little bit of the little fake pitch. And I want to see right there that cut, and then he just explodes. Look at him high step in there, and then watch him finish that run. You want to pump your team up, give them confidence. Watch how he lowers his shoulder here. You'll love to see that if you're a teammate. They fake the handoff. McKenna throws, gets the completion to Ott. Diving oh. for the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, wow. A nice fake and then yeah. the little rollout and the touchdown toss from Alex McKenna to Will Ott. And I'll tell you, Alex McKenna made a great play there. You'd think he'd been playing quarterback all year long. Great ball fake, but then he was initially looking deep into the end zone, John, and he did a great job. He held on to that ball, and the defender actually took the deep guy, and he adjusted to Will Ott. Will Ott, great catch, does everything he can to get into that end zone, but that was a great play by Alex McKenna. John Blake is the place kicker. Surprisingly, we have a flag down. That will be the sixth penalty on Breck here in the first quarter. Blake will have got a good light. You know, have to back him up a little bit here on this extra point attempt. Well, keep in mind, too, that's into the wind that direction. Five yards in high school football can be a can be a big deal. Snap is down. Blake had to hesitate a little bit. The big rush and down goes Xander Williams. A little bit high and it took him a second to get it down. That messed up the steps for Blake and so the conversion fails and it remains 6 0. Here's a look at that touchdown. Great ball fake right there. You can't see it here, but he was initially looking down the field. He looked the defender off and he checked down to Will Ott and Will Ott. Takes a contact about six yard line and just keeps fighting to that end zone. And you can see they're pumped up, they're fired up. Here you're gonna be able to see it down. Watch the defender, you see how he goes with the deep guy. Great job of holding the ball by Alex McKenna and his eyes were down the field looking at Jack McKenna. I'm sure Jack will tell him after the game, hey, I was wide open, throw that one to me, brother. But that, that was a big time play by Alex McKenna. I'll tell you, those fans deserve a lot of credit. Toughing it out in the weather. And you can see they're fired up, they're pumped up. 
Blake to kick off. 6-0 Breck here late in the first quarter. We'll keep this one on the ground. It'll be scooped up at the 25 and returned out past the 35. And a return of 11 yards. Aiden Hutari on the tackle and on the return was Jaden Quast. Well, Alex McKenna has had a great game defensively too, playing middle linebacker. Had two nice completions there on that touchdown drive and threw his first touchdown pass of the year as well. You don't have much time to celebrate because now you got to stop, try to stop this beacon, beacon offense and their rushing attack. 220 yards per game rushing, John. Hmm. That'll win you some football games. Yeah. Especially. Well, and I can tell you, I mean, they don't get a lot of big, big plays. You know, a lot of five, six, seven, eight-yard gains. But sometimes the best the best defense can be a great offense, too. When you have long, sustained drives, good time of possession, you keep that other team's offense off the field. Brock Gratz operating from the 37. Quick handoff, this is Johnson. Punishing run of 12 yards out to the 48-yard line, 49. And a first down on the first play from scrimmage on drive number two for the Beacons. Well, I think he saw Derek Turner running the ball in that last drive and said, okay, I can show you what I can do. And he had great footwork, got to the outside, and then it was his turn to finish that run off, and he did. Falling forward an extra three, four yards to pick up a first down. That's a good opening play on this drive. On the 49, the handoff goes to Bryce Paul. Into Mustangs territory, turns sideways at the 45 yard line, gets down to the 44. Good first down run of uh, seven, maybe eight yards. Well, and they do a nice job. They send Cal Johnson, who we just saw have a great run. They send him forward as the lead blocker, as a fullback. So not only do you got to take on Cal Johnson, but if you can shake that off, then you got Bryce Paul, who's a big, strong kid at 5'11", 180 pounds. And if you can gain eight yards on first down, John, that'll do it for you. That is the end of the first quarter. Our score in the snow. And the wind and the cold, it is the Brent Mustangs. Six, the Concordia Academy Beacons, nothing. We're back with the second quarter on CCX Sports right after this. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Just west of downtown Minneapolis here in Golden Valley at Breck School, McKnight Field, getting ready for the start of the second quarter. Between Concordia Academy and Brack. The Beacons have it second down and two. Just outside the Brack 40. Trying to turn right is Erskine, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. I love John Blake did a great job of staying at home on that reverse. Made the tackle and then just got up and walked away. That was a beautiful play. I didn't know CCX had its own blimp. Right about that. Things must be going well. I like it. Loss of a couple on it. It's third down and now close to five to go. Ball at the 46 of Breck. And off this is Johnson. He's got a big opening. 35 down to the 30 yard line on the first down. Tackled on the play by Bore Cornier. But a good rush of 16 yards for Cal Johnson. They just do such a good job of changing it up a little bit. They put that guy in motion and ends up being the lead blocker for Cal Johnson that time. And you can see he's got big, strong strides. Only 5'10", but 210 pounds. And a nice tackle, too, by Cornier. I thought Johnson might be gone on that one. 
And it looks like the Beacons are doing exactly what a 6-0 and team does on the road. You give up some points, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to go down and do what we do best, and they've done that on this drive. Power football and a great, great dose of Cal Johnson. Fresh set of downs from the 30. Breaking one tackle, then spun around at the 27 is Erskine. Bring up second down and seven. Yeah, and they're going to need Aiden Hutari, number 76. He's a junior linebacker for, for Breck. They're going to need him to have a big game because those are tough. When you got a fullback leading in front of you like that, too, you got to shed him and, and, and try to make that tackle. Not a big play, but again, four yards on first down. Mark Gratz out of the shotgun. Erskine comes in motion. They give it to Johnson up the middle. And he'll get a few yards inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. To knock on the tackle along with Ott. They'll set up third down and three to go for the Beacons. And so much of uh, the Beacons running attack is done between the tackles. And they dress it up with the motion just to try to move those linebackers or hesitate them for a second. And their quick handoffs and Kel Johnson hits that hole so hard. Third down for the Beacons. Short yardage, give. And the oh. ball comes out at the end. Oh, yeah, wow. it looks like it's yeah. Breck football. Blake has the ball, and it is. Wow. The Mustangs turn over the Beacons at the 21-yard line. Well, and, and more importantly, you see Cal Johnson's down on the on his knees right now. Such a talented running back. That was a big hit, wasn't it, John? I mean, Cal Johnson had the first down, but boom, that's just a great hit. There you see the ball definitely came out. I think it was Alex McKenna that had the hit. Yeah, well, he's had a great, great game on offense and defense so far. And that's not easy, right? Let's see. That's a form tackle if you've ever seen it. Look how low Alex McKenna gets on that. And that's not easy stopping Johnson when he's got his full, full steam ahead like that. That was a big time hit. A nice job stripping the football. And that's what this weather will do. Johnson's normally very sure-handed. Very uncharacteristic for him to lose, a, lose the ball. Otari was in on that uh, strip of the ball, too, and tackle with McKenna forces the turnover. First down run for Turner. A couple of yards out to the 25-yard line. Not much there. All the two, three yards. Make it second and seven. Just over nine minutes to play in the first half. I'll tell you, there's a great job by, by our group there giving you the, the real-time weather. 33 degrees is certainly doable. It's that 21-mile-per-hour wind that makes it cold, makes it hard to throw, makes you appreciate some of the throws Alex McKenna had earlier in the game going against the wind. And up under center on second down, the flag out. Oh, we get timeout rather. Timeout for Breck. Their first charge timeout here in the first half. Comes with uh, just over eight and a half minutes to play in the half. Well, similar weather conditions tomorrow night, not you and I, but yeah. in the Twin Cities for Gopher football. Yeah. Unbeaten against uh, Nebraska. Well, good to see a former Eden Prairie Eagle, J.D. Spielman, who's having a heck of a year for, for the Cornhuskers, come back. And that's going to be a big one for the Gophers. I think people are tired of seeing them undefeated, barely in the in an easy preseason, beat a couple of lower-level Big Ten teams. Not that Nebraska's phenomenal, but that's a game you got to have if you have big bowl aspirations. And so uh, all eyes will be on that. And, of course, Sunday you got a big game with the Vikings and the Eagles, too. So it's a big weekend of football here in Minnesota. You know, we talked about it too before the game, John, you know, with Breck at five and one, Concordia Academy at six and oh, 
you know, very good teams, very similar teams. We thought we were going to have a slugfest and a real competitive game, and that's that's sure what we seem to be getting here so far. On second down, McKenna, play action, a little roll out. And he's going to oh, yeah. go, and he's yeah. driven back by Bryce Paul. Yeah, that time I thought McKenna waited a little too long to tuck that ball and go. And he's got to be careful, too, with this ball out like that. Slippery, watch him hold it here with that one hand when he gets hit. That's where if you're the Beacons, you're going after that football, trying to bat it out. But a nice job by Bryce Paul coming up and making that tackle. He did pick up four yards. It's third yeah. down and three here now for Breck from their 28-yard line. He had room on, in front of him. I thought if he tucked that a little bit earlier and just decided a little more decisive and, hey, I'm going to run this ball, I think he could have gotten eight to ten more yards. But either way, it's still a positive play, and it sets up a very third and three, very manageable. Mustangs quickly up to the line. McKinnon looks over the defense. And we get a flag. Oh, that's big. Play a game on Breck. That's big. Third and eight is a totally different animal than third and three. Got to have a little bit more urgency in that play call. And you talk about having a new quarterback, right? That's part of it, learning the flow of the, t uh, of the huddle and, and the naming of the plays and just feeling comfortable doing that. That's certainly part of it. McKenna wanting to throw, goes downfield and off the hands of Jack McKenna and incomplete. And it's fourth down. Aren't you impressed with Alex McKenna's arm? I mean, he, he's he got a rifle on him for someone that's not a natural quarterback. I mean, on the run, Wet ball, guy in his face. I mean, he throws it a tad bit high, but that's one that Jack McKenna, his brother, has to come down with. That would have been a, a big first down. But a nice job by the Beacons holding here. They have a chance to get the ball back with pretty good field position. Tyson, his second punt. Snap with a little bit off. It's a good kick, and it's fumble. That midfield ball is loose. Still oh. loose and recovered <laughs> by Breck at the 38 of Concordia Academy. And guess who on the recovery, John? Alex, Alex McKenna. McKenna. <laughs> well, we've seen the ball go on the ground here a couple times tonight, and it's certainly hurt the beacons. A nice job, McKenna gets him down, but look at this hustle, too. It never stops keeps going for a great effort by both teams there, both guys. Look at him hop over that guy. Ball still loose, able to have the wherewithal to get on it. Heads up play by Alex McKenna. Turner trying to stutter step his way outside, turned the corner, 40 yeah. yard line and got a couple of yards yeah. is all to the 37. He kind of is that Le'Veon Bell, like that slow and then he attacks. It's almost a you know, similar to a basketball move, a hesitation. And then when he explodes, there was nowhere to go, John, on that play. But he just having that patience and then that explosion, able to get to the outside and pick up three or four yards. That's her, I heard you used to run the ball like that. <laughs> to the sideline and get out of bounds, yes. <laughs> Second down and eight. Give us to Turner. Nice Trying to break a tackle, but Cam gets forward to the 34 as Bryce Paul got a good hit on him. Gain of two. Weather's made a difference tonight in the game, Ryan, and we saw it right from the start. Well, we talked about this was that first pass attempt by McKenna. And fortunate, you know, for the Mustangs, is he was able to, to hang on to it. Same with that one, almost an interception or a fumble. And unfortunately for the Beacons, every time they have put the ball on the ground, Breck's been able to capitalize. Here was the punt we just saw. Big, big play. So two turnovers for the Beacons. Mustangs not, not holding on to the ball that great, but it hasn't hurt them yet. But what is hurting them, John, another penalty. How many is that on the eight? Eight in the first half with still plenty of time left. I'll tell you, you're up 6 nothing on a very good football team. you got a short field here. 
This is where if, if you're the if you're the Mustangs, you gotta capitalize on that turnover and see if you can't punch it in here, try to get a two score lead. That could be huge. Third and ten back at the forty. Turner in motion. The throw will go to him, and it's incomplete. Or is it a lateral? We'll see. I didn't see a signal yet. I think it's a that was a wide ball it's recovered by Brack, and it's fourth down. Wow. I, I love the play call. You're, you're always trying to get Derek Turner the ball. How can you do it in different ways? Just a quick and inaccurate throw, and again, someone that comes down to the weather, the ball's slippery. But if you can get Turner the ball out wide like that already, you know he's going to make something positive happen there. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see that play show its head here later in this game. Looks like they will go for it on fourth down and 10 from the 40. I think they go with a hard count, try to get three, five yards out of it too. Can a drop back? Breaks out of what would have been a sack, but he can't break out of that one. And Johnson gets him back at the 45. Well, you talked about Cal Johnson in the pregame being a great running back, but also a heck of a defensive player. Defensive end that time never gave up on that play. And he ran down a pretty good athlete in his own right. You see him right at the bottom of our screen. Watch number 80 just turn the Jets on. And actually lucky that Alex McKenna didn't fumble that ball. He's holding onto that ball with one hand. Joe Concordia Academy holds after they fumble and they get the ball at the 45 with five minutes and 37 seconds to go here in the first half. Two timeouts remaining for the Beacons. Inside give and into Brack territory. It's bouncing all the way down to the 45 yard line and be close to a first down. And a pickup of. 10 yards exactly, first down. Well, we've seen the Beacons, they've been able to move the football. The fumble, of course, on that last drive ended it, and then the, the first drive, penalties essentially ended it. So they've had success, you know, doing what they're doing, but they just can't beat themselves. They gotta hang on to that ball, and they can't afford any more penalties. They called the first down too early. It's second down and nine, my mistake. Second down and one after a nine yard gain. Now, they give the Johnson again, and he will fight to get to the sticks. He got, it. got it. He'll be close at the 45 yard line. Yeah, and they will give it to him. Yeah, this where time. he fell, it looked like he went past that. He had three Mustangs holding him up, but Johnson, using that strength, able to fight forward. And by falling forward, essentially got him the first down. Five minutes to play in the half, first down and 10. Beacons at the Mustangs 45 yard line. Gratz from the shotgun. Hand off, breaking one tackle, spun around at the 44, is Quast, and he'll go down there. Well, Quast did a great job of not, not going down there in the backfield. Able Beacons to fight forward, player, yeah. yeah. Lost. We'll come out, take a look at uh, Jaden Quas, two-way starter, running back, D-back, junior. We talked about early injuries amplified with the smaller roster size and the guys that go two ways. And now you're just replacing one starter, replacing two. No, and he's, he's a big part of their team. You know, we've seen him both on offense. We've seen him on defense as well. And you can tell he's holding his head like there's something that's hurting him. They're taking a look at the knee. See if we can see right there. Just a great job just avoiding being tackled. But a lot of times when you're fighting like that, you can see when people land, it's when they land on your knee and your leg gets bent. You can tell right away he was... He was hurting. Oh, you hate to see that. Yeah. 
We'll take a timeout on the field. Our score here in the second quarter, Breck 6, Concordia Academy nothing. We're back with more after this. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Jaden Quast being helped off on the field. Good thing is he's, he's, he is walking himself to the bench, although slowly. Yeah, he just gets so nervous. Anytime you see a young player holding those knees, I, I hate that. Hopefully it's just more initial pain from it and it dissipates. Nothing, nothing structural or nothing major. Second down and nine for the Beacons. Johnson doesn't get much right ready for him and they make the stop. McKenna, the last one off the pile, but the team tackling there by the Mustangs. Well, and the thing about both of these teams, they both have really good running backs. Nate, or Cal Johnson, excuse me, and Derek Turner. And they're going to keep giving it to them over and over and over. And you can't relax because that one, that one time you don't do your job, Cal Johnson is gone and he will score. Or Derek Turner is gone. So it's... They're going to keep bringing it at you, but you got to bring it that intensity and you got to have discipline on every play. Rats now up under center on third down and eight. And he'll give to Johnson. 40 yard line. Johnson's got a first down. Keeps his balance and all the way down to the 32 yard line. It seems like when he decides to go full speed like that, he's going to be successful he's not going to get denied we've seen him a couple of times now and he kind of gets a little bit of green in front of him and he can turn it up upfield he's got great speed and power combined big run gain of 11 to the 32. and off to johnson and hit and dropped blake gets initial Penetration into the backfield along with Ole Miss. And they had a lot of guys right around the football there. Well, heck of a job by John Blake. Able to shed his blocker coming right at him and just waiting for Cal Johnson right at the line of scrimmage. And you can see when you tackle Johnson, you got to stay low because he's so powerful. Second and 11. After the loss of one. Grats will give, hand off. And a good strong run to the 25 yard line. Aiden Kingsbury. I was gonna say, was that 75? <laughs> it was. 6'5", 260 pound junior on the carry. That's great. Big fella. I'll tell you, he looked like a running back. He didn't look like a an offensive lineman getting that ball and he's in the backfield again and you can use him either as a blocker or you can see he can run the ball too. Eight of eight to go back to Johnson. He'll get a first down and Hal Johnson with another strong run. He's down inside the Breck 15. Well you can see this is just hey we're you know what's coming. Full backfield we're coming right between the tackles. What are you going to do to stop it? That's just power football right there by the Beacons. On first down, they give to Johnson again. Slips back inside. 
Still going, and he's down inside the five. I mean, these are eight to 12 yard gains every time. And if I'm the Mustangs, I'm, I'm bringing everyone to the line of scrimmage. Because you know where the ball's going. Now it's just mano a mano. You gotta, you gotta win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. Another gain of 10 on first down and goal. They give to Johnson. Yeah. To the end zone, he is in for the score. There's a flag down and holding oh. on Concordia Academy. Costly penalty for the Beacons. Got a minute 27 to go in the half with two timeouts remaining. But now backed up to the 14. Look at it again. Yeah, you can see that right there. It, it probably not necessary. Yeah, there's Couple maybe Bryce Paul could have gotten him too. Yeah. And if I'm the Beacons, I'm sticking with that same play. Second and goal. Johnson does get the carry again and gets wrapped up. Jack McKenna and Alex McKenna on the stop. Well, that's a lot of muscle on that side, especially when you bring Kingsbury in the backfield. Gain of four to the 10. Second down and goal from there. Down to a minute to play in the first half. You can see, look at all the defenders within five yards of the line of scrimmage for Breck. There's a big fella. A big power <laughs> run again for Kingsbury. He's got great, I mean, he's quick and he's got good footwork for a young man, 6'5", 260 pounds. Gets five yards down. Cordy Academy will take a timeout, stopping the clock with 45 seconds to go. Third down and goal from the five. A reminder to you, vote for the play of the week, sponsored by Chick-fil-A of Maple Grove each week. Our CCX Sports Play of the Week, four plays for you to vote from, to choose from. Go to ccxmedia.org, go to the play of the week tab, and vote for your favorites for this week. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A of Maple Grove. How needed is it for high school athletes now to have you know, CCX, you know, doing these games, having plays of the week, and so many people come to the website and they vote on that, and it, it, it gives you almost, you feel like you're a college or a pro athlete now when you're in high school. Just a, a wonderful coverage of, of these young men and women, and great feeling for them, too. Over 9,000 votes last week. Yeah, un unbelievable. Well, and I did go to Chick-fil-A 9,000 times <laughs> last week, too, so maybe there's a correlation between the two. <laughs> Third down and goal. 45 seconds to go. Concordia Academy. One timeout remaining. Go back to Johnson again on the run and he's not getting much at all. Good penetration nope. inside. It's fourth down and goal as Vincent you know, Tanaka got inside. You know what I would do, John? I would have the quarterback keep it. They go to look. Quick count, Johnson gets back up. He's not going to get wow. there. What a stop. Sonan Gudema, 61 <laughs> in on the stop, had some help. Hidden with Tari there. A lot of direct Mustangs around the yep. football. That was team defense at its best right there. Nice job, too, by Jack McKenna coming down, not letting him go in the hole, and then you're holding on for dear life, trusting that your teammates are coming. And when you're playing a great running back like Cal Johnson, you have to team tackle. Right there, holding on. Look at how many blue jerseys come and finish it off. And we saw a touchdown by the Beacons negated because of a holding penalty. And then the Mustangs come up with a big fourth down stop. Lucas, you should tell Cohen as well on the stop. McKenna. Jeez. Running hard. <laughs> Wow. Helmet comes off. Flag comes out. Penalty. McKenna without his helmet right now. <laughs> they pulled my helmet off. <laughs> Let me get the face mask. 
penalty on Concordia Academy. This will be a 15 yarder against Concordia Academy. We're down to 12 seconds to go. Still a long ways for Breck to go. It'd be surprised to them to do anything too risky here. He got the six to nothing lead. Two timeouts left, but still at the Roman 30 yard line. Andrew Williams, who does play some quarterback for them, is in now under center. And gives the ball to Turner. Trying to go outside. Not much room for him. He gets shoved out of bounds at the 35 after a gain of five. And that is the end of the first half. Nice start for the Breck Mustangs. They get the one touchdown run, the only touchdown we've had in the game. And the pass from the Canada Ott in the second quarter. Or late in the first quarter to make it to six to nothing, and that is all we've had for scorings and the tough weather conditions out there. But there's a six to nothing lead for Breck, who did not get on the board last week against St. Agnes, the team that Concordia Academy beat a couple of weeks ago, nine to seven. Then St. Agnes puts a 14 to nothing shutout on Breck last week, and. We knew we'd be in for a tough game tonight, and that's what we've had. And it is six to nothing right now as we head toward halftime. Neither the team obviously <laughs> warm at this point as you look at the, the Breck Mustangs huddled in the end zone. Concordia Academy has gone off uh, the field. We'll hear from both coaches here at halftime. Bob Wolf is ready. He's standing by with uh, Ryan Iverson. Coach, before we get into anything football, I got to say I love the shorts. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, I wear shorts no matter what. I'll shovel yeah. snow in it. So, yeah, this is football weather yeah. for me. I love it. Yeah, I love it, too. So what did you think in the first half? I mean, we knew you guys were going to try to run the ball. We knew they were going to try to. Yeah. Physical game. What were your thoughts? Uh, you know, we did a good job of getting the ball down in towards the end zone, into the red zone two times. And just uh, penalties have killed us, and uh, they do a great job. You know, John has them coached up well. They're uh, cracking down on the ends on us and trying to take away the run as much as possible. But, you know, we're just trying to keep pushing it through and uh, try not to make as many mistakes in the second half. You guys are 6-0 and, and and really have run the ball at will almost this year. Yeah. Do you do anything different or anything out of character in the second half to try to get something going? No, nope, I think we stick with the same thing. You know, if we can get it down in the red zone two times again, okay. let's uh, get it through and uh, get our score up. So Stay warm and enjoy a great second half. Appreciate yeah, good luck, Coach. Yep. Back to you, John. All right, thanks very much. We'll hear from John Martin before the beginning of the second half. So look at that fourth down goal line stand by Breck near the end of the second quarter. To keep our score at Breck 6, Concordia Academy nothing. More prep football from the Twin City Metro Rivers District coming up after this. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, your boss, your boss's boss, you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. Or you, your co-pilot, your co-pilot's co-pilot. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Break six, Concordia Academy nothing. Halftime of our high school football game tonight on Friday night. Well, the Minnesota football community, the Osseo schools, lost a, a great man and a great coach this week in John Hansen, who passed away at the age of 91. John would have been 92 on Saturday. Wow. Coached that team for four decades, 1952 to 19. Wow. 
91, won 259 games, which at the time was a state record at the time of his yep. uh, retirement, won 16 con 17 conference titles, six section titles, and the field that Carl Tonfield eight years ago renamed John Hansen Stadium at Carl Tonfield. And uh, John, just a great man, a, a choir teacher and a, and a football coach. And you think of all the guys that he coached through the years. And I remember him telling us the story about when he started coaching in the 50s, he, they'd have to wait for sometimes to delay practice because the kids had to go home for, for harvest or whatever yeah. in the fall. They had yeah. move their practice time around. It shows you how much things yeah. changed during the time he was there. But a, a great man, a great coach. And his last game we televised on, on – Northwest Community Television back in the fall of 1991, a night not much different than this in, in a way. It was a cold night up in Forest Lake. They lost an overtime playoff game to Forest Lake. Their head coach, Mike Grant, who shortly after that went to Eden Prairie, and I uh, had a nice email from uh, Coach Grant about John Hansen uh, today, and he, he said how much he, it was an honor yeah. for him to coach against John Hansen, and yep. to hear that from from Coach Grant was, was great, and he he knows how many, yeah. you know how many players Mike Grant has touched, and John Hansen yep. the, the same way a generation before. You no, know, when you're when you're a, a head football coach or really a coach of any sport, you get a, a great uh, privilege to touch the lives of a lot of kids, and you can do it in a positive way or a negative way. And, uh, and and John certainly did it in a positive way. Hundreds and hundreds of kids got to play for him. And, and when you, you know, I've talked to former Osseo players that played for him, and they don't talk so much about football, just about what a great man he was and how he treated them and made them feel. And um, what, a, what a great man. And to do something for 40 years, John, is you just don't see that anymore at one institution like that for 40 years. And you do it because you, you love kids and you love teaching. You're not doing it for the money. You're not doing it for fame, anything like that. So uh, <clears throat> congratulations. If, if only we're all lucky to live 92 yeah. wonderful years yeah. and, and to be of service like, like he was, congratulations to, yeah. to him and, and to the whole community of Osseo. Funeral services tomorrow in Osseo, 1970, state champions, the Osseo wow. Orioles. Uh, uh, life well lived. Yeah. John Hansen would have been 92 on Saturday. We'll be right back. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Rick Mustangs lead Concordia Academy six to nothing. At halftime, as we look at highlights from the first half of play, certainly playing a factor here, but we had some good offense in between. A good throw there by Alex McKenna. Set up a first down. Will Ott on the receiving end of that 22-yard pass. And there's a touchdown pass to Ott that covered 12 yards near the end of the first quarter to make it 6 to nothing in favor of Bragg. Forty Academy able to rush the ball for over 130 yards in the first half, 16 carries and an 82 yards so far for Cal Johnson in the game, but a couple of turnovers for Concordia Academy came in the middle of that second quarter. Ball slippery as well, and so going out of the hands there of Jack McKenna, and then of course the run by Johnson. It looked like the Concordia Academy is going to go in for a score here. He had a couple of strong runs for 10 yards that got them down to a first down and goal, but Breck able to turn back. They 
Beacons on a fourth down play and goal from the five and run out the rest of the half. You look at the first half numbers, 132 yards rushing for Concordia Academy and 81 for Breck. No passing yards for Concordia Academy and 34 for uh, the Mustangs. 115 total yards for Breck and 132 for Concordia Academy. Two turnovers for Concordia. No points off those turnovers for Breck and a lot of penalties so far here in the game as you see the numbers. 14 total flags in the first half. We'll take a break. We'll come back and more football from the Breck School in the Golden Valley after this timeout. It's 6-0. The Mustangs lead the Beacons. Back to the field we go. Ryan Iverson with John Martin. Well, Coach, for us wimps up in the booth, it's colder than a squirrel's tail out here, but you said it's football weather. How is the weather impacting this game, in your opinion? Um, you know, it's just, it comes down to mental toughness, which, you know, which team is going to react or let the, let the weather dictate how they play. And, you know, it's sloppy early. It's cleaning up here a little bit. So hopefully the, the ball's a little less slick the second half. You're on your third quarterback this year. He threw it. I said, I commented, his arm looked like Brett Favre on a couple of those throws there into the win. How into the win were how you with how he played? Uh, yeah. No, Alex has been a quarterback in the past. Um, so we we just got him in there and, and you know, he just kind of relied on what he's been taught before. And, and yeah, he's a great kid. So we knew this. So you guys are you were five and one. They're six and zero. Oh, both like to run the ball. Both play great defense. It's kind of a slug, slugging match. What's going to be the key here in the second half? Uh, for us, we got to clean up the penalties. Um, we can't play behind the sticks as much as we have. We got to stay on schedule as much as we can, and just continue to be physical on defense. And when you're going against them, especially when they put a 260-pound kid in the backfield, you know where that ball is going to go. Is it? How do you stop it? Especially when you know what's coming. Well, you know, you just got to go low, create a pile, and, and make the kids bounce, and, and hopefully your your uh, you know linebackers and secondary can can get there and clean up clean up the mess. You look, you got a toughness about you. Would you rather play in this or 75 degrees out? I mean, this look at this this is beautiful. This is football weather, man. Well, you got to put shorts on like the other coach. <laughs> hey, there's, hey, there's a difference between being tough and dumb. <laughs> Best of luck in the second half, coach. Back to you, John. <laughs> All right, thanks both to both Coach uh, Bob Wolf and to John Martin for taking time with us here at halftime. We'll take another timeout. We'll come back with the second half of play from Breck after this. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, your boss, your boss's boss, you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. Or you, your co-pilot, your co-pilot's co-pilot. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today.
Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. John Jacobson, Brian Iverson, we are back. Breck, ready for the second half of play. Saw the first half numbers pretty close on uh, total yardage. 132 for Concordia Academy, all on the ground, and 115 for Breck, 81 on the ground, and 34 through the air. So we saw the snow that was on the field, covered the field uh, before the game. That is pretty much dissipated yep. now. And the, it's wet. It's now just yeah. kind of wet and cold. That field is right? wet, and the wind is, is pretty. You can see it kind of blowing on your screen there, but it, it's wet and cold. But I, I got to tell you, both coaches, great great guys. They're both <laughs> tough, you know, gritty, old-school football coaches. I mean, you love it. They kind of, you know, said what we've been talking about. You know, John Moore for Concordia Academy. Hey, we, we got to take care of the, bat, the the football and finish those drives and you know, on the other side, Coach Martin basically just saying penalties are killing us. So I think I think both teams are kind of right where we thought this would be, give or take, you know, six or seven points. But I expect more of the same here in the second half. Whoever executes, whoever can clean up the penalties and take care of the football is going to win this football game. John Blake to kick off. And we are underway. The start of the second half. A handoff handled, or the kickoff rather, handled at the 18. And returned out to the 33-yard line. And so pretty good field position to start the second half for the Beacons. They'll be at the 33. Yeah, and I thought, you know, as well as, you know, we've talked a lot about the running backs and, you know, how, how, dominant these both of these running teams are but both defenses I thought played an excellent game not a lot of big plays and even a couple of the longer runs they were just excellent runs no mental breakdowns no missing tackles pretty well played defensively by both teams first handoff of the second half is Johnson and he's tackled in the backfield yeah. Vincent Tanaka on the tackle but we have a penalty for the snap of false start against to Concordia Academy and you know both teams talk about <laughs> they wanting to clean up on the penalties and we get one to right off the bat here against the Beacons. Well it looked like that time everyone got started before the ball was was snapped. So they just got to get that timing down. I always hated on defense when you made a tackle and then realized that the, there was a penalty before so you didn't get the credit for that, that tackle. First down and 15. And off goes to Johnson. Breaks one tackle, but not two. They tried to go up high and then went down low and bring him down at the 32. He's up four of the five yards lost on the yep. penalty. Bring him second down and 11. Well, Griffin Olness, number 52 for Breck, had a free hit that time on Cal Johnson, and he was way too high. And he's got to wrap up. You can't use your arms to tackle a guy as strong as Cal Johnson. You've got to get low. And you heard Coach Martin talk about that. You've got to stay low. We've got to hit low, especially a big, powerful running back like that. And they give it to Hinkberry in second. Now the ball came out. Breck saying they have it. Oh, they're going to be third down. Here. Nope. It, it, the timing looked a little off on that play, didn't it? Like a, Gratz wasn't quite sure or had to really hustle to get that ball to Kingsbury. Just watch the timing. You can see you know, it looked like he dropped it there. The ball's yeah, definitely out. out. You know, but, but I don't know how they didn't get it back. I think somebody was right on it, but 
Well, Cal Johnson got, got in there. Got that was right. Heads up play by Cal to, to recover that ball. On third down and nine. And they are going to have to punt yeah. as Johnson is wrapped up. Tackle on the play by Oldness and Alex McKenna. It'll be fourth down and nine. Oldness is going to have to have a big half here because the ball is going on the left side, his left, and he's unblocked. So he's coming down the line. He's going to be that free tackler. He missed the tackle a couple plays ago. That time did a nice job of wrapping up. Good team tackling. Anytime you see that gentleman waiting for a punt, too, you know he's got the ability to take it to the house every time he touches it. Ethan Winterfelt, who's the kicker, but not usually the punter. Quast is usually the punter, but we saw him go out with an injury in the first half. Is back to punt for the first time tonight. On special teams, that ball's wet. High there you snap. Go. And Breck is going to take over. And down inside the 20 at the 19 of Concordia Academy. I was, as I was saying, right, anytime this weather when it's wet, long snapping, we, you cannot take it for granted. That ball is just a little bit too high. And again, Breck going to have excellent field position. This is one where you get a, a turnover like that, this kind of field position at home, up one score. you got to punch it in and go up two scores, make a statement right here and right now, if you're trying to beat an undefeated team at home, you need to score here. Their turn of the loan back behind McKenna, who keeps it and Ooh. gets a couple of yards and a yeah. fly comes yeah. out for yeah. the late hit. And that's gonna cost Concordia Academy. Yeah, and those are tough, right? At home when you watch, you can see personal foul, late hit. You see that and you're like, oh, why would you do that? But it's so hard when you're coming to the ball. You see great effort running. Yeah, that's tough. You, you know, Tashney that time was pursuing. I think he thought that, that McKenna was gonna still be standing. I, I don't think that's anything malicious. Now that's a tough play to ask a defender to stop it, but absolutely the right call. First and goal from the eight, Turner. Oh, gets the call tackle. and he is going to be tackled for no gain. Oh, Tashney got it right back. Yeah, he had that penalty there and he more than made up for that with just a beautiful form tackle. No gain, second down a goal from the eight. You don't see Derek Turner go down on the first contact very often, but there was no question about this. Look at that tackle. Look at how low he is. That's a phenomenal. Jack McKinnon goes out split, top of your screen on Alex McKinnon on the shotgun on second down and goal. Got time to throw, fires toward the end zone, it's picked off. It is intercepted and returned out past the 10 yard line, a huge play by Tashney. <laughs> so he gets the penalty, yep. comes back for with a tackle for loss and then an interception. Yeah, and that time McKenna, that's the one thing as a quarterback, when you don't have a ton of experience, especially in this position, you cannot throw into traffic. You gotta be absolutely sure. You throw it away, you live for the fourth down, you don't wanna turn it over. But how about Tashney making a great play, coming from the middle of the field to his left, tipping it, great concentration. And to your point, John, he made up for that penalty by two big plays. We saw him just have a great tackle, and he's fired up. He knows he, he more than made up for it. And he comes right back to play offensive guard. First down and 10 from the 10 for the Beacons and their second possession of the third quarter. Run up the middle, will gain them about four yards. Ryan will bring up second down and six. Well, we talked about with both coaches taking care of the football and penalties. And already in this half, we've seen penalties hurt, hurt teams. And then there's the takeaway too. You know, in high school football, too, a lot of quarterbacks, they will eye their receiver. And if you're a linebacker like that, you kind of play center field. You read the eyes. And if you have quick enough reactions, you can make up and step in and pick that off. Johnson off tackle on his feet out past the 25 to the 26 and a first down. Pick up of 11. 
he's like a fast bowling ball, isn't he? He gets through. <laughs> <laughs> he hits the first couple pins. They go flying. Then the rest of the pins go flying. He just keeps going forward. He's got that great combination of strength and speed. And again, look at the big horses right up front doing a great job of blocking. That's a lot of muscle coming at you on that side of the line of scrimmage. And you probably aren't going to win your one-on-one -on -one battle, so you better have some help. You better have great linebackers coming over to help out. 20 carries, 101 yards for Johnson. First down and 10. And Cordy just passed their 25. He'll get the call again. And a couple of yards out to the 28 this time. Bring up second down and long. How about Bob Wolf when I asked him, you know, are you going to do anything different in the second half? He said, nope, we'll do what we've continued to do. And sure enough, we've seen the same two or three plays, maybe out of different formations. And they just continue to have success. That's, that's a, tr a coach who trusts what he's doing and he trusts what his kids are doing. And they'll give it to Johnson again, up the middle. Still on his feet and out to the 39-yard line. Another first down. Finally brought down by Cohen. How many carries does, does Cal have? That's 22 now. Yeah, and you, you can tell in a, in a game like this with the weather and you're getting tired, he seems like it. He reminds me of, of the Maple Grove running back from a few years ago who was so dominant, who seemed to get better the more carries Evan he got. Hall? Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, you get 35, 40 carries to him, and, and Cal Johnson seems like that type of running back. Good tackle in the backfield here as Vincent Tanaka able to get yep. Johnson around the ankles and drag him down for no gain, even a short loss. Well, Tanaka is undersized, that defense alignment there, but he's got to use his quickness, and that time he did. Great job coming from the weak side, making that tackle. That's the key for, for the Mustangs. They got to win first and second down, make it third and long. If you allow the Beacons to get seven, eight yards on first down, you are virtually impossible to shut them down. Second down given, it's Johnson. And not much again. This time did get to the 40. I guess who had him again? Tanaka. Yeah, 77. Nice. Well, and, and that's the little chess match that's going to go on between these coaches and, and the offensive defensive lines. Do you, by moving Tanaka, maybe one half of a gap over and telling him to slant, maybe that screws up that play. And certainly the last two times, look at that. I <laughs> love the shorts. Third down and nine. He only thrown once, not again here as Johnson oh, gets the fly. carry and yeah. down he goes. Only got a yard before Alex McKenna drops him. That young man's a stud right there. Great tackler. Had a very good game as a quarterback. Watch him read this toss. He reads those guards pulling, beats the, the guards, and look at him. You know when he gets a chance to tackle, he's going to do it. Doesn't celebrate. He just goes right back into it. Let's do it again. Now this is where you got it, right around midfield. Now remember, we had a bad snap last time, so you always keep in mind, you're telling your special teams, watch the fake, don't go off sides here, keep everything in front of you, make them have to punt it here. Winterfeld hoping to get this one off, and he does a high kick. Bounce, and be down by Concordia Academy at the 33 of Breck. Mustangs will take over with another four and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Just the one touchdown, the touchdown pass and late in the first quarter from Alex McKenna to Will Ott. Yeah, very evenly played. Both teams running the football to some success, but not great success. Penalties, turnovers, great defense on both sides. You get the feeling if, if one of these young men, if it's Cal, Cal Johnson or if it's Derek Turner, one of them could break free for a big play. That might be the turning point in this ball game. Toss goes to Turner. Cuts up field of oh. the 40 into there the open go. field. And there goes Derek Turner. 65 oh. yards and a touchdown and no flags. <laughs> what did I just say, John? <laughs> If one of these great backs just get into the open field, I'll tell you what, it did not look like much was there. And <laughs> Derek Turner 
was running right to the right and then he turned it upfield and it was like a seam just opened up and that's what great speed can do and once he gets gone to that outside there's no one no one and i don't care what level of football we're talking about here in minnesota that would catch that young man that's a big time play and you know what it does too it helps your defense because now your defense isn't so nervous you know you got that two score lead Williams the holder, Blake the kicker, this one is down. Kick is blocked and it remains 12 to nothing. Interesting, I thought maybe with the weather you'd go for two there right. and try to get that other one back, but there's a crackdown block. We see how he's kind of patient, biding his time. And then when he cuts it, he's just so fast. And I'll tell you, when you're not used to seeing that speed, you, you, you can't practice against it. You can see how fired up the sideline was. Everyone's fired up, and you said it best. Initially, your first thought is look back, see if there's a flag on the ground. No flags. Derek Turner with a big, big explosive play, 65 yards on that touchdown. He's a fun player to watch. And he has given his team a 12 to nothing lead with 4.14 to play here in the third quarter. Well, you gotta feel that the Mustangs feel like their defense is solid enough Let's go, Let's with go, two Greg. scores, they can they can they can hold that lead. But I'll tell you, these are young kids. The, the tendency now is to relax a little bit. Their defense has to stay as strong as it's been, and they got to stay disciplined because you know Cal Johnson's coming right back at them. Short kick will be handled on a hop at the 24, and yeah. Hollis Erskine has nowhere to go. Guess who on the tackle? <laughs> Alex McKenna. Here's the night for Alex McKenna doing it on both sides of the ball. He really made some big plays at was a great throw. Uh, defense. They're in on that uh, fumble on the punt. Got the recovery there. This was, that was a great tackle. We saw it, and he, we didn't see it right there, but he had a, a touchdown throw too that I thought was a great read. He completely looked off the defender and able to throw for a touchdown. He's had just a phenomenal all-around game. First and 10 for the Beacons with some work to do now here from their 25. And we get a whistle, a procedure penalty against Concordia Academy. Their third penalty in this half and ninth in the game. I don't know if it's something with that motion that is that is causing that. If the you know when your player goes in motion, John, they have to stay straight. Sometimes you lean forward a little bit, that can cause that. But we've seen it a number of times. And I, I get the sense Bob Wolf does not enjoy those kind of penalties. Right. <laughs> First down and 15. Beacons back to their 20. And trying to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage, but not much going at all. It'd be second down in 15. Well, that's just great team defense. Run by Bryce Paul. His fourth carry tonight, first in the second half. Gains him two, and they'll make it second down and 13. That's what's so great about football, maybe more so than any other sport, John, is if you trust your teammates, you don't have to be a hero on every play. You just got to do your job. You might not make the tackle, but if you don't let a guy get outside and you know you got linebackers running over and they're going to be there, it's the ultimate trust, and everyone does their job. Great team defense. I know everyone loves offense, but I love watching great team defense. Pass play, and the ball is through the hands and incomplete. The intended receiver... S.A. Hago. And it'll be third down. Just a second pass attempt tonight for Brock Ratz and Concordia Academy. Well, that's a tough throw. A ball got up in the air, and you could see how it just died going into that win. And Hago's tried to come back to it. It's hard to see a night that's snowing, it's blowing. You know, the players don't have a dog with them, you know, keeping them warm. <laughs> I love looking at that picture with people wrapped in blankets and they see Coach Bob Wolf <laughs> over there in shorts. <laughs> Third down, 
That's going back the same way and gets the completion out to the 33 to Hago. So went back, didn't catch that first one, caught that one, but it will be fourth down. And that looks like, I think, well, yeah. let's see, Meekins, what are they going to do? They're going to bring an extra personnel. Yeah. I don't think they're going to punt here. They're, they're going to go for it. They're bringing big personnel, and I, I think that's where being down two scores right now says, hey, let's let's roll the dice here. You know, Bob Wolf saying, hey, we are a running football team. We think we're bigger, stronger, more physical than you. If we can't get two yards and we don't deserve to win this game, you watch the hard snap count. On fourth down and two, big play in this game late in the third quarter. Rats will keep it. Oh, good push. And gets yeah. a good interior portion. They have the first down oh. out past the 35. You know, and I like that. I love a simple quarterback sneak. If you hand off, you allow a chance that a defensive lineman can get that penetration into the backfield. You sneak it, and Brock Gratz, he's a big boy, 6'1", 190 pounds. Got a great push up front. Picked up four or five yards. That pays off. I like that call by Coach Wolf, and I like the execution, too, by the Beacons. First and 10 from the 36. That's back into the shotgun. Ball is bobbled and they lost back the 31 yard line. Right in on him was Griffin Olness. Yeah, I haven't done a ton of shotgun tonight. We've seen it a little bit, but anytime that ball's being snapped and in the air when it's when it's wet and windy out there, it can throw it off. And you throw the timing off, especially with that pre-snap motion. Just for a half a second, you get a, a blown play and a nice job by the Mustangs there converging for a big loss. Loss of four back to the 31. Gretz will hand off. Johnson oh, wrapped up play. by McKenna and dropped for no gain. I'll tell you what, if McKenna does not make that tackle, Cal Johnson's got a lot of room in front of him. That's a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. Not easy to do either against Cal Johnson. Well blocked. See how low and he wraps, he uses those arms, he wraps up. So many kids, you see it from the NFL on down, John, they hit with their shoulder pad, they do not wrap up. That young man's a great tackler. And that's not easy to do on number 80. Third down and 14. Toss goes to Johnson. Out past the 35, the 37 ball comes out. They're gonna say he's down. And it'll be fourth down and long for the Beacons. Well, now it's interesting for Coach Wolf, right? It's when it was fourth and two, I think that's a an easy call, but fourth and long, I wouldn't be surprised to see the punt team come in. Looks like they are. Especially with this weather, you can get a turnover, right? That's where you're going to tell your defense now, if you're the Beacons, is go after that football. And smart choice. They're going to wait until the end of the quarter here and get the wind going behind them. Smart play. Breck gets the only points of the third quarter. As we go to the fourth, it's the Mustangs looking to knock Concordia Academy out of the ranks of the unbeatens. Their score, Mustangs 12, Beacons nothing. More football on CSAX after this timeout. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Correct 12, Concordia Academy nothing as we get Start of the fourth quarter. It'll be a punt for Concordia Academy to start the fourth. 
Winterfeld standing back at his 23. Good kick away. Turner will take it. No, he, it kind of took a sideways bounce on him. And my best not to pick it up there. And it, he'll get the ball at the 31. It maybe could have gotten it, but it, at this point, you're up. Like you said, you, you don't need a turnover. It, it's risk-reward, right? right? And right there, he made a very smart play. Might have, could have gotten it and made something out of it or could have fumbled it and not get a good grab. It's slippery out there. That was a smart play, heads-up play. You know, right now, if you're Breck, the best thing you got is the time and the clock. So you got to try to sustain a drive here, take as much time off this clock, have your offense be your defense. No penalties here. You want to be clean, crisp, execute, and you don't need another home run. You don't need anything that's possibly going to turn the ball over either. You just want to pound the ball, take time off that clock, and maybe switch the field position. Toss to the left, or right here. Handoff goes to Turner. Oh. Had a touchdown on his last run. Out past midfield. <laughs> Breaks a tackle. Oh. Out of bounds at the 42. Is he fun to watch or what, John? They did a, that was a great play design. If you look at the top of your screen, we, we had a, it looked like it was going to be a toss to the right. They ended up going to the left. He just, he doesn't go down. A lot of guys would just go out of bounds. He's fighting for those extra yards. He's got that great speed, but he also, he runs a lot bigger than 175 pounds. And he's got a nice stiff arm too. 160 yards rushing yeah. on 15 carries and a touchdown. First and 10 from the 41. He'll get the call again. Cuts it back inside. And go down after three yards to the 38. Again, a play like that, not a big gain, but he had nowhere. And, and a lot of running backs would have been tackled for a loss there. And he's just got that patience and that shiftiness and explosion where he can turn something, get something positive out of something where a lot of running backs would not. Total plays from scrimmage. Concordia Academy's run 48 and just 28 for Brown. But Breck has the lead and the football here in the fourth quarter with 11 minutes to go. McKenna on the keeper breaks one tackle, falls forward to the 34-yard line. Set up third down and short. Cal Johnson on the tackle. Well, he runs that quarterback sneak like a running back, and that's where being a former running back can come in handy. He's got he's quick, he stays low. And again, five yards on a quarterback sneak. He set up a third and very manageable. Look at those third down conversion percentages. That tells you that you're playing good defenses. Both of these teams, 25%. Give us to Turner. Oh. Got a first down. Yeah. Trying to pick a hole and gets five yards to the 29. That was a heck of a run, and it's a little subtle move that Derek Turner does. You're going to see there is a defender right there coming at him but you see how he just shifts slightly to the left he keeps his balance too he's got his eyes up too he, he makes people miss if you can make as a running back that initial defender miss that is the difference between good and greatness and that that's he's a great running back timeout taken by breck here just under 10 minutes to go and in control right now Leading 12 0, driving again. As you look at the, the Twin City Metro Rivers district and standings within the district and overall, Concordia Academy coming in ranked sixth, or excuse me, 6 0, ranked eighth in Class 2A St. Agnes. Team that they beat 9 7 a couple weeks ago, ranked ninth and Breck Academy Force in uh, Brooklyn Center and their records coming into play here on Friday night. You know, nine to seven, St. Agnes beat Breck 14 to nothing. And if Breck were able to hold on here, those three really kind of all at about the same level there. And this is a big game for Breck. And I think you beat a team like Concordia Academy who's big and physical and strong. You know, that could be the kind of confidence boost you need to, as you head into the latter stages of the season. So this is a really, really big game, I think, for the Mustangs. First and 10 from the 29, low snap. McKenna makes the handoff. He'll keep it, yep. and he'll go forward 
Five yards to the 24 yard line. There's some hitting going on out there. This is a physical game, and I, I think that time it was actually supposed to be a handoff to Turner, but with the snap off, it kind of threw the timing, and I'll tell you what I like about McKenna, his instincts take over. Sometimes quarterbacks will wait, and they're not sure what to do. As soon as he realized he couldn't get that to Turner, John, he turned it upfield and got four yards out of it. And they give it to Turner. He's got a hole and slipped a little bit as he came to the 20-yard line, and that, that cost him a first down. It'll be third down, and a little over two to go. And so far, great drive by the Mustangs. Nothing big, but they're taking low-risk low plays. They're making positive yards, no penalties so far. And again, you got third and short with a short field, so you got to imagine they're going to go for it if it were to get to a fourth down. So you got your whole playbook available right now. Exactly the kind of down and distance that you want. Three receivers to Sneak. the right. And then the ball is out. McKenna picks it up. Gains a little bit of yardage actually out of it. Not much. It'll be fourth down. Mustangs fortunate to keep the ball. And they will have an opportunity to go for it here on fourth down. And two to go. Want to get the ball on the ground for Breck. But every time they put it on the ground, they've been able to, to capture it. That would have been a big turnover right there. Tashney on the tackle. Fourth down, a long one to go here for Breck. So, JJ, do you sneak it with McKenna or do you try to get the ball to, to Derek Turner here? I think either one's a good option. McKenna will hand off to Turner. Hit in oh, the backfield, but an leaned forward oh. and looks like he got the first down. Tashney hit him low. Oh. We'll see where they spot it. I thought for sure he had it, but no, they're going to definitely mark what? him short. Oh, oh he's, he's, he looks like. Oh. He definitely did not. I don't think his knee went down no. where they thought he had, no. it had gone down. He would have had the first oh. down. It would have brought out the challenge flag yeah, in the NFL, yeah. but not here. It's a turnover on downs, and, and Cordy Academy makes. A huge stop when they needed to. They get the ball back. Still down by two scores, but they've got a chance yet with 7.55 to go here in the fourth quarter. They need something in this drive. How about Tashney with the hit, too? Great tackle. Great effort, too, by Turner. Kratz will hand off. This is Bryce Paul on the carry. And Paul out past the 25 to the 26. Gain of five on first down. And slow to get up. Yeah, there's hitting going on out there. You know, seven, seven thirty left too. And if you're Breck, you'll give up those four or five yards right now. Just nothing big. You want to be sure tackle. Nothing behind you in the passing game. Remember too, Concordia Academy has that wind behind them. And Paul was a little shaken up. Now goes down on a knee, and he's going to have to come out. We'll come out and take a look at him. Upcoming on CCX, it's playoff soccer time. I think tonight's weather is bad. Think of tomorrow. <laughs> There's a lot of section soccer semifinals going on around the metro and the state. We'll have a section final game for you coming up on Tuesday. Possibly two games. But we'll uh, see how the outcomes are tomorrow and have an announcement on what telecast we'll have Tuesday. Same with Thursday in Class A. Class uh, AA will be a final on Tuesday. And our last regular season football game coming up next Wednesday. Maple Grove That'll will host a... Champlin Park. 7 p.m. kickoff at Maple Grove High School. That'll be a good one. Champlin Park's in a dogfight right now with Totino Grace. It was 7-6, to six, Totino. Yeah, still 7-6 to Tino Grace, up by one. Nice bounce back here for the yeah, Eagles, a yeah. team that was 2-7 a year ago, and both those teams 5-1 and one coming into play tonight. Second down and five here for Concordia Academy. Well, just past their 25-yard line. If we wind the clock, we're down to 7.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Beacon still looking for their first points. Get the ball here. 
couple of yards out to the 27, just a gain of two. So it's uh, slow going on this drive for Concordia Academy moving forward, but again, the clock continues to move. The kind of offense, it doesn't quickly move down the field, right? Give. This is Cottle trying to spin out of a tackle on Candace. He is hit by Bo Cornier and dropped. Well, Bo's had a nice game tonight, too. He's come up and made some really nice tackles playing in the defensive back. And to your point, too, I, the Beacons aren't necessarily a home run offensive team. They Their best bet is you get Cal Johnson to get to that second level and he can break one. But, you know, you've set up a fourth and four here. This is a huge, huge play. If they don't get it, it's obviously a short field for, for Breck. Oh, they're going to punt. That's where you watch a fake, too. Erskine is back as if he is going to punt here. We'll see. And they go, and they don't get it. Breck was ready in the middle of that uh, defense, and they make the stop. Yeah, I think uh, two for Concordia Academy. They only had 10 guys out on the field for that fake punt. They went with the fake. It was a direct snap to one of the up backs there, and they try to create some confusion, right, where you're not sure who's, yeah, there's 10 guys on the field. Nice job, and you can see it's number 66 right there. Eyed that football. I'll tell you what, I, I like the idea of it, but I, I think you just run your normal offense and give Cal Johnson a chance to get you four yards. Turner on oh. first down. It's to the 22 yard line. That's a gain of six, Ryan. And again, not much there. A great spin move, and he just keeps fighting for those extra yards. And right now, if you're Breck, you, you know, and if, and if I'm Coach John Martin, I'm telling my guys, hang on to that football. That's the one thing right now that could derail this thing is a turnover. Maybe the Beacons get a scoop and a, and a quick score on defense. Take care of that football. Five minutes to play, second down and four after the first down gain of six. Not comes in motion, fake the pitch, nice and tackle. Turner is dropped for a loss. Back at the 24-yard line, Clinton Garrity, senior defensive mm -hmm. tackle on the stop. Yeah, undersized too, only 170 pounds, but that time he did a great job of getting off his defender and just tackling a really hard, hard kid to, to bring down one-on-one, -on -one, but a great tackle by Garrity. Third down and five, down to four and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. McKenna fakes the handoff, a rollout. He's going to loft it to the end zone. The on oh. for the touchdown. What a call, John. Third and five, you got to think the Beacons are thinking run, run, run. Great play action. That's the touchdown. Same play they scored on a touchdown pass earlier at that time. McKenna went to the deep guy, Will Ott, in a beautiful throw into the win on the run. Wow. You got to step into that, get enough on it. Great concentration by Ott. Just barely gets his feet down. But how about Alex McKenna? Two touchdown passes on a night like tonight. Blake's extra point is up and it's through. And it's 19 to nothing, wow. Breck. We're getting great play fake right there. All kinds of time for McKenna. I think that play action bought him that time. And you're so used to seeing the run if you're the Beacons that everyone's bought that fake. They're up and you sneak Will Ott out deep into the, the end zone there and a great throw. Maybe even a better catch and getting those feet down. Uh, Breck has to be thrilled with how they've come to play tonight. They knew it was going to take a physical effort. And they've been physical. As you see, Charlie Reichs, quarterback, he's on a scooter. But not a bad substitute to bring that young man into the game. 
tell you what made that play, I thought, John, was the, was the fake, the play action. Three plays, 28 yards. Didn't take a lot of time off, but you'll take it when you get six or seven points out of it. Now we're under four and a half minutes to go as Concordia Academy with a good return. We'll get it out past their 40 yard line, but now trailing by three scores. And on the kickoff return by Hagos. Well, now you wonder if the Beacons are going to try to throw, right? Try to get something. Something big going down the field. The problem is that's just not their identity this year. And, you know, I think if you're a defense lineman for, for Breck, you're, you're thinking, let's get after the quarterback. And if you're linebackers and, and safeties and defensive backs, you got one rule right now, and that's nothing gets behind you. Keep everything out in front of you. We'll give up a 5, 6, to 8, 10-yard gain. Just keep the guy in front of you, nothing big. They're one for three passing tonight for nine yards. First down and 10 ball is at the 40 of Concordia Academy. Gratz looking left, throws that way, oh, gets nice the draw. completion. Ball is out though, and Brack has it. They're going to say incomplete. <laughs> How about McKenna there? Just threw a touchdown pass. Now he's patrolling the middle of the field like Ronnie Lott. Nice modern reference there, Ryan. I like it. But Come on. <laughs> So who would be the new Ronnie Lott? Well, I know. A great hit. He's been all over the field tonight, offense and defense. I'm going to interview that young man after the game, and I'm going to ask him if he thinks he had a better game on offense or defense. What would you say, John? Well, it's hard to say. I think the it, importance it, of him on yeah. defense, stopping the, the run, has, has been tremendous. Okay, Vontez perfect. Is that a better <laughs> reference? <laughs> no. He's out of football right now. How about Harrison Smith? <laughs> Throwing a completion of <laughs> four yards. I was trying to think of a hard hitting guy in today's NFL and you just with all the rules you can't you can't hit hard anymore. Game of four. It's third down and six. You know, those are it's a nice quick throw, and, and if you're the Mustangs, we'll take that. You'll give that up. Have them have that, that completion. Just make sure you sure sure tackle him. And you see that clock slowly ticking away. That's Preck's best friend right now. Third and six. Gratz. Now the shotgun standing. It is 40. And a 318 to play. Quick drop back, it's away from some pressure. Will throw down field high, incomplete. A flag is thrown across the field. We get coverage on uh, Hago. So the pass was incomplete. We'll check out the flag. An eligible player downfield for Concordia Academy. They'll decline that. It'll be fourth down. Well, I thought that was great play by Gratz there just to avoid the rush, buy some extra time. Had a good throw, just a little bit high. You know, and that's the thing, too, when you, and I always talk about balance, John, but this is why you got to have balance, being able to run and throw, because there's going to be certain games where another team takes your strength away, and that's where you want to be able to, to throw it a little bit just to sustain drives to keep things going. Fourth down and six. Rats throwing and it is intercepted. Picked off by Ott. And he brings it into Concordia Academy territory at the 49. Nice and he's throw. got an interception to go along with his two touchdown catches tonight. Yeah, and that one, it looked like him or Cornier could have had the interception here, but a nice job by Ott coming over. <laughs> you Cornier can see Cornier was, took my pick away. I think man. he wanted a fair catch it. He was waiting <laughs> for it, and Cornier came over, or excuse me, Ott came over with the one-handed pick. And that's where Cornier comes over to the sideline. Like, did you see that? I was I was there. But great effort. From midfield, McKenna will get back up under center. And then we get a timeout for Concordia Academy. And they only had 10 guys out there. Here are the games coming up next week. Week 8 around the area. I mentioned our TV game earlier is Maple Grove 
at home against Champlain Park. Wyzetta still unbeaten. will go on the road to Burnsville. Armstrong at Forest Lake. Armstrong having a great season. Unbeaten yeah. coming into play tonight. Lutina Grace at Creek and Durham Hall. Walconia at BSM. Manil unbeaten coming into yeah. play tonight. Osseo at Centennial. Close out the regular season. Cooper's at De La Salle. Park Center at Spring Lake Park. Irondale at Hopkins. Brackets home again. will host Minneapolis Henry. And Brooklyn Center, 3.30 home game against Minneapolis Edison next Wednesday. So the Wednesday games right before MEA and soon thereafter the playoffs are starting. It's amazing how fast the season goes. It seems right. like just yesterday we were opening the season up with a, it's the sun still shining at the end of a game and it's 80 degrees and here we are with snow and wind and still wearing shorts though. <laughs> McKenna oh bounced gosh. off a player right at the line of scrimmage <laughs> and runs forward for nine yards. That was just a weird timed play. He took a step back, paused for a second, and then just propelled forward, <laughs> picked up eight or nine yards there. This is where you want to you want to run that that play clock down about two or three seconds and just take the time off, keep it simple. And awaiting where he gets up under center. Now we'll get on under with the, the ball at the 41. He'll give the ball to Turner. Hit in the backfield and thrown back. Or no gain or a short loss. We'll bring up third down, but just two minutes to go in the game. You got to think, you know, even if they weren't to pick up a first down, that Breck's going to win this game. But of course, if they were able to to get the first down here, it would effectively end, yeah, the, end he, the game. He can go into a victory yep. formation yep. after this if you get a first down. Nope, not yet. Breck had a lot of penalties in yeah. the first half. They were able to clean that up, though, here in the, in the second half, and they're going to get flagged here, it looks like. But. Um, the one thing that John Martin talked about at halftime is needing to, to clean that up, and for the most part, they have. Yep. Well, I go back to, remember it was 6 nothing. Concordia Academy drove the field. Cal Johnson looked like he had a touchdown there, and that was negated because of that holding penalty, and then ultimately Breck was able to stop them. I thought that was really kind of the turning point. That sucked a lot of momentum out of the beacons. And they never really got into that good rhythm again after that. They're down at six from the 46. Toss goes to Turner. He's going to get a first down to the 35 yard line. And a first down to pick up 11 yards. And then again, really well blocked. He's able to get to the outside. They do a nice job of what we call a crack block, John, where the wide receivers are coming to block the defensive end or outside linebacker. And when you can free up Derek Turner to that outside, he's got that great patience and then that explosiveness. I think the only criticism of that is you want to stay in bounds, right? When they're under a minute and a half left. But of course, when you pick up 11 and get a first down, you, you don't have too many criticisms. And McKenna will just go down on a knee. Concordia Academy playing. They rushed in there hard, but that, nobody hurt. No loss of one. The clock will continue to run. So Breck will go to six and one. They mentioned a home game next Wednesday here against Henry in the playoffs. For Breck, class 3A team. Concordia Academy competes in 2A in the playoffs. Start that next Tuesday for the smaller classes. For class 6A, it does not begin till a week from the next Friday, or two weeks from tonight. So they get really about 10 days of practice time between their game and, and their opponent. That's kind of a nice little break. You can kind of worry about yourself. And I'll tell you, that was a really well well played football game tonight by Breck. I thought they did an excellent job. 
Ryan's going to go down, get some post-game comments from the Mustangs. They win it. A nice team effort for Breck tonight. John Martin's team goes to 6-1. and 19-0 is the final. We'll take time out. Come back. Our post-game from Breck after this timeout. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, know, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Final score tonight, 19 points for the Breck Mustangs. Nothing for Concordia Academy. Nice shutout win for Breck. We're going to go down to the field now. Ryan Iverson standing by with two winning Mustangs players. All right, thanks, John. I'm with Alex McKenna and Derek Turner. Derek, I'm going to start with you. First time I saw you carry the ball, and I said, that looks like Le'Veon Bell out there. Great patience, but then that explosiveness. How much fun did you have tonight? I mean, we're, we're champions right now. We are sharing the conference championship right now. It feels amazing. It feels great to bounce back from that loss last week. It feels fantastic to have this stuff. You came in just under 1,000 yards. Tonight you got that 1,000th yard and some. You knew they were a very physical football team, a very good defensive team. How were you able to have success? We just play our game. This is the Breck Mustangs 2019. We play our game. <laughs> Who's your favorite running back in the NFL? Adrian Peterson. No who, who do you think you run the, the most like? Me, me, I'll say me, I'll say me. <laughs> well, I, I kept saying, I thought they did a nice job. I, I said, if you could get to the outside, get to that second level. I was waiting for both offenses to have that home run play. You got it there when you got that, when you went up two scores. How big was that play? It set the tone. It set the tone, shows that we're a real contender, shows this team is legit. Well, congratulations on an awesome game. And over to Alex, uh, here's the question I have for you. I thought you were dominant on the defensive side of the football. Great job on offense. Which one did you think you played better on? Ah, uh, I don't really know. I haven't played offense. I haven't played quarterback for a while, so probably defense, but I love both. It was fun. That first touchdown pass that you had, I we watched it a couple times on replay. It was all the wide receivers. You looked the, the defender off. You looked deep, the defender went deep, and then you came back to your 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 uh, the closer receiver. Yeah. It's like you were a veteran quarterback there. Thanks. <laughs> How comfortable are you playing quarterback, stepping into that role, former running back, but you played quarterback at some point growing up, but how comfortable are you at quarterback? Um, I started playing quarterback because the quarterback got hurt, and now I'm playing quarterback again because the quarterback got hurt. It's just kind of how it is. I just want to win. I don't really care where I play. Tonight you knew they have a very good physical offensive line, good running backs. How important was it to shut down their run? Oh, that, that was all of it. You saw at the end of the game, once they went to pass, it was over. So, yeah, you just had to get them off of their game, and that was pulling. They, you could read everything they did. They just, they telegraphed it. So. How much fun playing in the snow, playing in the wind, having great fans here watching you. How much fun is this? Oh, it's great. Nothing's better than a game in the snow, especially with a dub. So it doesn't really feel cold when you're winning. So Six and one, you, you know, co-conference champions. What do you guys have to do now with the playoffs lur lurking to maybe make a run here in the postseason? Well, that would, I would say, was our first game playing a full 48 minutes. So we got to keep doing that and just, keep the intensity up. I think our defense is something that I haven't seen from this team in a while. Everyone's there to fight, so it's great. Well, I thought you had a heck of a game. Congratulations on the win. Go celebrate with your teammates yeah, and you. stay warm. Okay, have a good night. All right, back to you, John. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. Thanks for those guys for taking a few moments with us and 
fun win for them in the snow and the cold tonight, and they improved to six and one. A great team victory. Uh, a lot of terrific players tonight came through for Breck, and they win it going away. Well, thanks to our crew who weathered through this tough weather night here in Golden Valley and Breck. The home team gets a win tonight. Our final score, the Mustangs 19, the Beacons nothing. For Ryan Iverson and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson. Thanks so much for tuning in for our coverage of high school football on CCX.